Adding support for a new platform feature in your app can be a very repetitive process. Many times, it will switch back and forth between your code and a step-by-step -step tutorial or documentation, especially where you're not familiar with the API. That was the case when I was implementing support for AppLinks in a sample app back when Android Marshmallow was released. AppLinks is a neat feature that lets you verify a domain that is listed in your activities intent filters. From that moment forward, whenever a user clicks on a URL containing this domain, your app will open automatically without showing the disambiguation dialog. I remember that in order to make this API work, I had to make many small changes in different parts of my app, which is why I was very curious when I heard about the new AppLinks Assistant that is part of the Android Studio 2.3 release. Its promise? To add AppLinks support in your project with just a few clicks without leaving the IDE. Let's see how that works out. I found a perfect sample app for my experiment under Google slash search samples on GitHub. It's a very bare bones recipe app. The main page doesn't really do anything, but there's also a content provider with several example recipes set up and ready to be displayed in the detail page implemented in recipe activity. All I need to do is open the activity and call show recipe, passing a content URI which matches a recipe in the content provider. Now imagine that I'm also running a website for my app, and I'd like my users to be able to share and open links to recipes in the same way, regardless of which device they're using. Let's see how long it takes to implement this using the AppLinks Assistant. You'll find the Assistant under the Tools menu, and it shows up as a panel on the right side here. First step, I want to define URL mappings in my app. I will add just one to connect recipe URLs to the detail activity. I just have to fill in my website's host name and what path to match. I'll use the path prefix recipe to also capture any recipe ID after the last path separator. And I want to launch the recipe activity. The tool generates the correct intent filter and adds it to my manifest. I can even see a preview of the changes and check that the URL I need will get matched to the correct activity. Step two, add logic to the activity to handle the URL. I'll select the activity that I specified in the previous step, and some code gets added to my onCreate method. This is just to help you get the necessary data from the intent, but remember that it's up to you to actually handle it in your app. In my case, I want to load and show the correct recipe. For that, I need the recipe ID, which is the last path part in the URL. Now I'll just convert that to a URI pointing to my content provider and pass it on to show recipe. In some cases, such as this one, when the activity's launch mode is set to single top, you will also have to handle a new intent delivered to an already running instance of the activity. I will refactor the code I just wrote into a new method and call that from on new intent as well. Before I move on to configuring AppLinks on my server, I just want to check that everything I configured so far works on the device. I'll just use the AppLinks tester in step four to launch a URL pointing to the grilled potato salad recipe. It correctly launches my app and shows the recipe. Great. You might have noticed the disambiguation dialog that popped up when I launched the URL. Getting rid of it and launching directly into the app is the last part. Let's proceed with step three, generating the digital asset links file. You'll need a few details about your app, such as the domain you're using in your links, application ID, and the signing config. Most of these will normally be pre-filled for you, so you can just click the Generate button. Now, you will need to place this file under this path on the domain that you control. Please note that this is where it's the easiest to make a mistake. The path must match exactly. The well-known folder must be under the root of the domain and the server must be using a valid HTTPS certificate to serve the file, even if your app links are only using HTTP. For testing my app, I'm just using GitHub Pages, which gives me an easy way of hosting my asset links file with the correct SSL certificate. Let's test a sample link again at step four. And the app launches, taking me directly into the recipe. No need to click through a dialog this time. That's AppLinks, fully added to a sample app in just four steps, without looking at the documentation. If you like the AppLinks Assistant, or if you have any feedback, please let us know on our social channels. Thanks for watching, and for more Android Studio videos, click here.